Hey everyone, welcome to my FPGBC setup guide. This is a do-it-yourself Game Boy Color build. Everything is included in the links that I've provided below. Not everything is in the kit that they have on their website. You need to buy a few extra things, buttons and, and membranes. So just click on all the links below, buy all those things and you will have everything that you need to build your own Game Boy Color. The other thing that you will need is a tri-point screwdriver. I didn't have one in this build so I made a plan with a flat screwdriver but it did cause issues so get a tri-point screwdriver before you start this build. We've got the screen. It says there test the screen beforehand so we are going to test the screen beforehand. This sticker I realized is a funny playing sticker for the back of the screen and for the bottom of the screen. We've got our little battery, the funny playing speaker. This is a pretty good little speaker. There's a rubber membrane around the edge of the speaker. Just make sure that is installed on the speaker before you put it in the device so that it doesn't rattle around in your body. Here's your motherboard with a place to put your carts. We've got all the contact points for D-pad, A and B buttons, start and select all of those things. We've got the multi-function button on the side of the motherboard. And then obviously tea with biscuits is quintessential for a build. Rubber membranes, buttons, and all the other little goodies, and the case, the actual body of the device. I went for the, the smoky black, which I really like. They've got these authentic stickers that go on at the end, and you'll see how they look at the end, really cool. The nice thing I like about this is if you do a DMG build, um, you know, buy an old DMG and put a new case in it, you don't get the Game Boy branding on it. Here you actually get Nintendo branding on the front. Not sure how legal that is, but it is pretty cool. Screws, now important thing on the screws, you'll see me inspect it here, is the fact that they are tri-point screws. So they've made sure that you know the, the, the star screws and the tri-point screws are different and you need to distinguish between the two. Um, and you'll see where I put those now. That's where your USB-C is and your headphone jack. All right, and we're getting into the build. So the first thing we need to do is just check. So these ribbon connectors, if you're not used to them, are quite unnerving when you first use them. But just slide it in until there's a bit of resistance and it's nice and flat. And then just put the little uh, latch on. I put a little packet there just in case there's no, like no shorting or whatever, nothing's gonna happen. Turn the motherboard over. We're gonna install the battery. Now the battery just slides on sort of vertically. Make sure you're, you'll see the contact points on the underside of that little uh, plug. And uh, I have to zoom in here, it's gonna get very pixelated. But you just slide that into the thing from, from above. It's actually quite easy to install. Just remove that protective cap for the speaker. We're gonna test the speaker now as well. Plug that speaker in and it should just power on and you're going to get a ding with the fbgbc logo and we're good to go <laughs> all right off we go um, just unplug everything again and then uh, make sure that latch is undone as well so that later we can install the screen here are our buttons we've got our a and b buttons we've got the d-pad um, we're going to review the d-pad in another video our rubber start and select buttons very nice rubber membranes so the d-pad's got a little notch to just make sure the notch goes into the correct place your a and b buttons go in there it's got little guides so the buttons can't get mixed uh, you've got your rubber start and select buttons which go in perfectly just <laughs> dust those little parts off already getting dusty all right so install the rubber membranes make sure just check the way i put them because the the side that makes contact with the metal with your, your, your electrical contacts that's got a very specific it's the darker black that needs to make contact with the electrical contacts there we go okay i'm just going to show you this rubber membrane it actually has got a l shape to it so it wraps around the edge of the speaker. So you just install that on the speaker and that will stop rattling. And that's how it looks. And you wanna install this at a 45 degree angle with the wire facing the corner of the device. You'll see later, that's probably the best position you're gonna want it for the installation to keep it out of the way of the motherboard. All right, now installing the motherboard, you face it this way with the cart plug facing upwards and you line it up with all the little pegs on the plastic shell, it does feel a bit weird because it actually rocks in place. So we're gonna start with the bottom screws. There's a little pin on the edge there that gives you most of your guidance on where to put it. If it's rocking, don't distress, it is supposed to feel like that. 
All right, so now we're gonna look for our star screwdrivers, your normal screw heads, not the tri-point screws. And so you're gonna use those. I was, I got the advice from Macho Nacho Productions to not use the center screw. So I'm only using two here. Apparently, in some cases, the, the center screw actually causes cracks. So we're just gonna use two screws, screws on either end using the star screwdrivers. They are shorter screws, so they are specifically for this part of the installation. So what I did here was, it is quite precarious. You feel like you are doing something wrong because they are self-tapping. They're creating the thread as you screw them in. And so um, screw them in, give it a little movement, screw them in, give it a little movement. As soon as it stops rocking in place, that's when you know you've screwed it enough. Don't over screw it because you could crack your PCB, you could crack your case. It's all plastic, remember that, it's not a metal thing. Then just inspecting the buttons and already falling in love with the device. There. Okay, I'm feeling like it's not wriggling too much now. I think we can go on with the installation. Now we want to just plug in the speaker. This cable is going to annoy you. Well, it annoyed me with my sort of control freak nature. Just make sure you line it up. You'll see here does actually, there's only one way to put this plug in, but the contact points need to be at the bottom side of the plug and then the little, like little notches on the top. And so just slot that in until you feel it, it'll give a little bit of a click in, not a click, but a, a, like a light thud, and then you know you're in. Um, until you, you know you've get resistance, it's not going anymore, you know it is uh, firmly in position. And then you wanna tuck away that cable. It might just spring out no matter what you do. Then once you put the back plate on, just make sure that that cable is not crimped in any way. Now we're gonna install those little plastic goodies. The one is the IR cover which this doesn't have IR but it's there and then the other one is the on off switch so this is a little bit complicated but just pay attention to the screen how I put it into the device that is how it goes in so there's only a few little things that you need to know to get this done properly uh, we're going to talk about the screen in a moment but here let me just put the IR cover thingy in and again, just pay attention to how I put it in now. Um, it also has a specific way it goes in. And then the back cover. So we're already nearly at the end of the installation. Again, you're gonna need that tri-point screwdriver or you're gonna come into issues here or you can just put it in like a savage like I did with the flathead screwdriver. The back plate goes in pretty much without any issues. It's a little bit squishy. It'll bounce back a little bit. That is fine. And we're putting in those, those tri-point screws. And let me just point out where the screws go in so that you know you've put them in the correct places. And you can already see it taking shape. It's looking so nice. Um, these buttons are excellent. Okay, well, the D-pad, yeah, we'll look at it in a, in a future video, but the, the D-pad is interesting. It's not the best, but it, it is, is okay. I would say if you've got original hardware, uh, like a membrane and a, a D-pad, maybe try use it in here. And here's that extra screw. I feel a bit weird leaving a screw out of the build, but according to Macho Nacho Productions, he's a fairly well-known uh, modder guy. He says leave it out, so let's leave it out. And then to put the battery in, again, the, that plug goes in vertically. So up from above, you just push it on. So get it into position, all the get it aligned with that little uh, plug and push it in um, and you, you'll feel it kind of just feel, it feels firm and in place and then you're done, you know? And I mean, if it switches on, then you know you've done your job. Tucking away the, the wire, you can just get creative there, but just make sure it's not crimped in any way, not squished too much. So kind of just roll it around and make sure that it's, it's in, but not squished. Like there's no sort of sharp, like parts where you've bent it sharply because that will cause wear and might break. Look at that, we're looking good. And uh, the next thing is just the screen. As mentioned, it just slots in like this, but you can see that unsightly piece of the screen at the bottom. And so Funny Playing have now included these stickers, which I think is quite handy. Also, you know, some guys are concerned about shorting at the back of the screen, so they've provided the sticker for the back of the screen. So I'm gonna install that. Bit, bit of a tricky business getting that sticker on, especially the screen one. I don't know why I just felt that. I'm scared of the screen, to be honest. <laughs> and so I got it on um, and it does feel good once it's on because it just feels like it's protected. And then we get that bottom strip. Again, this really does feel good to have this on here. 
you do have the funny playing logo on it. So my idea was actually I was going to get some electrical tape. So you could just get electrical tape and put it on there, then you won't have the funny playing logo. But now that it's in my device and you'll see at the end what it looks like and you can decide if you do have a clear case, if you wanna just keep the funny playing logo, kinda of just support them by letting everyone know that you made a funny playing GBC. No, I forgot about my plastic spudger. That's what you need. It's a um, plastic spudger is nice for this so that you don't cause any shorts when you're pushing this thing in and all that. So the latch needs to be vertical, needs to be standing upright and uh, then you get your ribbon in there this is a difficult part of the build um, you know guys that have been doing this a long time will say you know it's easy but it isn't easy um, because you're holding the screen it's a piece of glass and then you've got to do this little task on the other side so just kind of be aware of both your hands so that you don't get sidetracked by putting the ribbon in and then you accidentally break the screen or something or pull it away or whatever so just keep the both things calm and collected Again, I forgot it about my plastic spudger, but I do use it in the end. And uh, just get that latch latched. Okay, once that's in, we need to get the 3M tape off the edges of the screen. You'll see the little strip along the edge. That's some tape. Uh, we need to peel that away, make sure the, the sticky part stays on. Um, you know, the, the chances of you pulling off the sticky stuff because it's very sticky um, is minimal. But I did struggle a little bit on the left. Uh, started using the tweezers, but I did eventually get it off. Just make sure the sticky do stuff doesn't come off. Um, you know, if you're really working to get this thing off, then you're you're, you're taking the sticky stuff off. Um, so just get that 3M tape, the, the tape cover off, and then start installing your screen. What I did find with my screen, and I'm not sure what it was, but I just found some resistance and I couldn't figure out where it was coming from. So eventually I just pushed the screen, gave it a bit of pressure and then slid it in at the top. The thing is you've got the top as a guide, but you don't want it to slide up slightly and then the, the, the 3M tape starts sticking and then you can't close it and you've got to pull that 3M tape off. So you want this to happen in one file swoop. So make sure if you do get that resistance like I did and I don't know where it came from, maybe some of the tape somewhere or something was just pushing the screen back up out of the body just make sure you keep a little bit of pressure make sure it's up against the edge and then slide that that screen in and put a little bit of pressure to get the 3m tape sticking because if you get that little motion correct then you're done and you know the only thing left to do is to put the stickers on they I actually didn't realize they do that little uh, Nintendo phone you know and get the, the Nintendo service you've got that little sticker as well at the back uh, which is really cool cool so let's pop a cartridge in here and see what it looks like switch it on so I'm going to do a full review on this but I played around with it in the studio a little bit they've got a few settings for the integer scaled um, then you've got the integer scaled with uh, like a pixelation to it and then you've got full screen obviously you know you bought this with this size screen just go with a full screen somebody might like the black bezels and just kind of play it as it as the Lord did good Lord intended but um, yeah you can play around with those I didn't like the colorizations for Game Boy games, just didn't like them. But you kind of just choose the one that works best for you. Um, I like a Game Boy colorization plus a bit of pixelization, but in full screen mode you don't get that. So I'll go for a slight tinge. Maybe I'll end up with the integer scaling. And then the D-pad, you know, I played this a little bit, played a little bit in the studio. It's not the most precise D-pad in the world. The action buttons are fantastic. But the D-pad, you know, if I'm going to play Super Mario and I'm going to be doing a platformer, you know, I'm after Darkwing Duck, I'm gonna hunt now for the Darkwing Duck cartridge. I have to have it. Um, all those things, I think are gonna be difficult to play on this D-pad. The plastic of the D-pad is retro to the absolute extreme. It feels correct, it feels great, but it's not the best, most responsive D-pad in the world. But there you have it. That is the FPGBC. It is effing fantastic. I would highly recommend it. If you can't find something that is affordable enough for you in your area, I would say just order this from China and build it yourself.